time, baby. There's no better time in the football card market than the playoffs. But at the end of the episode, we're going to give you something that we saw during last year's offseason that you need to keep an eye out for, right? But Andy, it is playoff time. This is the most interesting time as football card sellers and buyers because of the win-loss aspect and the ebbs and flows of prices when teams wins and loses. So overall, let's just say someone is new to football cards. What would be some of the key tips, Andy, that you would give them when it comes to playoff time, when it comes to buying and selling? So when it comes to buying, I'd say my key tip is to anticipate you know, whether that team is going to lose because if you're buying a card today, say on a Tuesday and the wild card game is this weekend, depending on the platform you're buying it on, if you're buying it on eBay, you got to get the card to uh, receive to you, take pictures, relist it. You're looking at a potential week process. If the seller ships it today, uh, you're going to miss out on a hype window of guys that are about to have the most defining moments of their careers this upcoming weekend. And, you know, if they win, then you're good. You know, they move on. So I would say if you're looking to buy on eBay, your safer investments are guys like the favorites that are to win the, this weekend's games, like maybe Tom Brady, you know, or Matt Stafford, stuff, stuff like that. I, I know that game's going to be very close. So, you right. know, there's some more, a little bit more lopsided games, but it's just, just an example because you got to think about the, the hype, when the hype is going to be the biggest is leading up into the game. And then it's all based on performance from there. So, Andy, let's go ahead and bring in the playoff slate. So what we're going to do, it's going to be a more interesting episode because we want to make sure everyone is prepared for what's ahead. Now, before we actually get into these games, Andy, uh, I do want to touch on the Chargers and in particular Justin Herbert, who, albeit won't be in the playoffs, it's very interesting because Herbert – played arguably the best game of any quarterback uh, through 64 passes in a must win or must tie game versus the Raiders. We won't get into that, but uh, it's interesting, right? Let's just say someone watched that game and they say, gosh, darn it, Andy, I've got to buy a Justin Herbert card right now. What would you do? I, I guess the best thing to do, I guess, Herbert's market will cool down maybe in a week or two, and maybe you could snipe a, a good auto when all the other players are buzzing. I, I guess that would be the best strategy. Yeah, it's not a bad strategy. I, I would definitely wait because, man, that kid is insane. The athleticism, right. the throws, the fourth down conversions, how clutch. I mean, just so clutch. So, you know, his high-end stuff right now is still moving for a lot of money, like just as much. A lot of that high-end stuff, just as much, if not more, than Joe Burrow. Um, there's still a lot of sales. Like, I counted 1,100 sales for Justin Herbert between Sunday and Monday. Tons of sales on Monday. And so it's going to, you know, but as our focus now shifts into the wild card and divisional round championship games, then all of a sudden Justin Herbert auctions could go well undervalued throughout the week, um, leading to some nice little buy opportunities. Yeah, and this starts our first game here. So once again, all the players that didn't make the playoffs, there are some interesting names that are in there. I'm still a big believer in Justin Fields. Obviously, we're going to see what happens now that Pace and Nagy are fired. Uh, I mean, imagine if they go out and get like Elaine Kiffin or someone like that that's going to put up big numbers and uh, give Justin Herbert – or I'd say Justin Herbert – Justin Fields uh, an offense that is more suited to his capabilities. Um, also, another player who was knocked out of the playoffs who – I think if you're holding him, you just got to hold on as Jonathan Taylor. Uh, because, Andy, you I mean, you and I, we were texting back and forth about how insane uh, his price has got. Mm -hmm. Here's my big concern if you're a Jonathan Taylor holder or buyer. Do you trust him to ever make a playoff run if they mm -hmm. really think Carson Wentz is the guy to be their quarterback? Andy, that just concerns the living daylights out of me. Yeah, I mean, talking about defining moments. I think that was a pretty defining moment this past uh, weekend when Carson Wentz went out and winced himself, <laughs> you know. 
And uh, that's not a good look for Jonathan Taylor. However, he's such a good singular athlete that you're right. His prices are, are elevated, but they're not at the hype. Like we said, the, like this cool down for, for Justin Herbert, you know, right off the bat, it's like, man, he's so good. People, a ton of people are still investing and collecting his cards. But then the the attention and the and people get distracted easily from that team is because the supporting cast, the quarterback scenario is not great. A lot of question marks, and then that leads to prices going back down. I like JT. I also like Michael Pittman Jr. a lot. I really do think he's a really good wide receiver. So if you can get your hands on some, even some PSA tens, Michael Pittman for a decent price. Once again. He's in that loaded wide receiver class, Andy. So Jefferson's going to be insane. C.D. Lamb's going to be insane. I don't think Michael Pittman's as good as those two guys, but I do think he is going to be better. And, you know, there's all these other players that we'll talk to uh, talk about. Obviously, Cortland Sutton's an interesting name. Jerry Judy's an interesting name. Also, Andy, to me, the biggest offseason domino is going to be Russell Wilson. Mm. So what I'm going to do, Andy, is I actually am going to make some Russell Wilson plays. I think whatever actually happens to Russell, in particular, if he does go to another team, his prices are definitely going to skyrocket. Now his cards are still pretty expensive now, but you know, once again, that first year prism, Andy, the, those cards are just so beautiful. I'm a, what, I killed one on my screen. <laughs> oh, no, why'd you kill your screen? What, what, what did you do? I was looking up Russell Wilson rookie cards. I don't know. As a kid, my eBay killed my screen. <laughs> well, well he, here's my thing, right? I love me some Russell Wilson. I do. I just think wherever he goes, Andy, this offseason is going to be the biggest story in the NFL, right? Uh, a legendary Hall of Fame quarterback going to a new team. Uh, we saw how big it was with Peyton Manning. I, I can easily see a scenario where his prices skyrocket wherever he goes. And then DK Metcalf, there's all these people out there, Andy, that have all these DK Metcalf cards. Uh, that That's going to be an interesting story. Very interesting story because he's another scenario like Jonathan Taylor. Without Russell Wilson, DK Metcalf is like the wide receiver version of Jonathan Taylor. And you you need that. Like you need that quarterback even more so as a wide receiver to really bolster your value. Uh, that that's a big question mark there. Cause obviously Geno Smith is not gonna cut it. They're gonna have to they're gonna have to bring somebody in through the draft or free agency. Now, I will say, I mean, I know we're kind of deviating a little bit from the playoff conversation. There's a couple big quarterbacks that are gonna be unrestricted free agents this offseason that I think are gonna move that are going to get a, a fresh start, that have had some time to sit under some really good coaching that I think are really good buy, super buy low right now uh, that could see a big uh, demand spike when they go to that new team. So now we get into these playoff games, Andy. Obviously, you know, the first thing is there are first-round buys. So only the one seeds get first-round buys. And Andy, we were telling people all year long to buy the dip – on the Titans, all the Titans, every single skill position yeah, on the yeah. Titans all year long. Ryan Tannehill cards were dirt cheap. I bought a bunch. I sold a bunch. Uh, Derrick Henry cards dipped a little. I, his prices still stayed up, you know, a good little bit. But AJ yeah. Brown, and now they're sitting there with that first round buy. Andy, we told them we, we were we were basically telling everyone we get some things wrong, but all year long we're telling people buy the Titans because they're in the AFC South, and look, they're going to be sitting there with time and rest and a home game. And here's something else that I really like about Titans players, Andy, is the AFC favorite are the Kansas City Chiefs. So. No matter what happens, if the Chiefs win this weekend, they cannot go to Tennessee because of how the playoff brackets work. So because of that, I love the Titans in their first-round matchup versus whoever uh, they play, even though the Titans themselves aren't really that good of a team. <laughs> yeah, but, man, they got um, – they they figure out a way to put it together. The coaching, Mike Vrabel, he, he's phenomenal there. 
Um, man, I love me some Titans too. You know, I've been investing in AJ Brown. He was so cheap just a couple of months ago. His cards have been totally hyped back up to pre, you know, AJ Brown injury levels, almost basically where they were at the beginning of the season when we had this high expectation for him uh, before he disappointed a lot of people and, you know, in the NFL and then their fantasy leagues. Um, and so we're seeing the same thing with Julio Jones. Julio Jones did not see the dip that A.J. Brown saw because Julio Jones, a Hall of Famer, you know, and the same thing with Derrick Henry. Derrick Henry is not a Hall of Famer, but with the way he's played the last several years, he was well on his way to becoming one. And that's why his values just haven't dropped off. Whereas with A.J. Brown, we've only seen one really good season out of him. He's 2019 rookie. So you know, his expectations were super high coming in, but then he disappointed. He only had the one boom week. The injuries struggles were real for him this year, and that held him out of a lot of games, and his price is tanked. I mean, you could got a, a rookie ticket auto, field-level silvers for around 10 to $15 Goodness. at some points in, in October, and now those cards are back up to 100 you know? Yeah, when this is a good lesson that I learned, and it's rather evergreen. Buy players that are hurt that play on good teams. So good players that are on good teams with good franchises and good quarterbacks, buy that dip, right? Because, you know, there's all these other receivers that are out there, and A.J. Brown – to me, is still a top 10 wide receiver in this league. I really do like him a lot. Uh, doesn't have the best quarterback in the world, but he's just really solid. So we told you all year long to buy up on the Titans, and I really like them going into the playoffs. Now, Andy, based on these Saturday games, Raiders at Bengals, Patriots at Bills, who are some players uh, you were looking at during this first batch of games? Well, I still see this week some opportunities on T. Higgins, right? I still think that there's some T. Higgins cards. And, and we talked about Joe Burrow having, you know, his favorite receiver being the open one. Um, and Jamar Chase was the big benefactor most recently. So there's a ton of people focused on Jamar Chase right now, and for good reason. But they're forgetting that T. Higgins just uh, two weeks prior, or one week prior, actually, had a monster week. So we don't know, necessarily know who it's going to be. I will say that Mike Williams had a really good night, uh, Sunday night um, against the Raiders. And T. Higgins, I, I think, kind of more fits his his playing style than, than uh, Jamar Chase. So I don't know who it's going to be this week. And I'll also say Joe Mixon's, like I was watching Joe Mixon uh, rookie ticket autos. I just barely missed out on these au auctions yesterday. Rookie ticket auto Joe Mixon going for twenty five dollars. I was like, that's that's too low. That's too low for a top three running back now in the playoffs. Yeah, I, I like Mixon a lot, especially with Burrow. You know, Joe is just so good. And there's just no other way around it. He's just excellent. Andy, my my, my player to look out for in this round two matchup. I know it's kind of basic to just look at the quarterbacks. But, you know, Mac Jones and Josh Allen, I couldn't I could not feel more opposite about both of these quarterbacks. Uh, <laughs> Josh Allen's prices have dipped his PSA 10 prism. Just bases were selling for nine hundred. And he last week, you know, I haven't checked before this episode, but there, his PSA 10 bases are floating at around four fifty five hundred right now, uh, if I'm not mistaken, maybe five fifty six hundred. But still. You know, it took a dip when Josh Allen had another fantastic year. Now, he didn't make the Pro Bowl. Uh, he should have got in over Lamar. Joe should have also got in over Lamar. So um, I, I'm, I'm still a believer in Josh Allen for the future. I'm still a believer uh, in his ability over the next 10 years, especially if Brian Dable is going to be their offensive coordinator. And Andy, you know how I felt about Mac Jones. This is the most baffling series of buys that I've seen in the market for any quarterback. And I think two things happen, Andy. The first is all the other quarterbacks didn't play all that well, which meant more people pouring money into Mac Jones cards who played for the best team and the best coach and the Patriots success has more to do 
in my mind, with Belichick than it does Mac Jones. Now, that doesn't mean that Mac Jones is a bad quarterback. It's just the price doesn't equate to the player, especially considering his prism hadn't come out, his mosaic, his select, all these other uh, releases. So, man, Andy, I, I, I don't know what to tell people that want to buy Mac Jones right now other than just don't. <laughs> yeah. Now you hit hit the nail on the head there, man. He is the prime example, the best example we have all year of of FOMO driving the market, fear of missing out there. I mean, you could have inserted a multitude of different quarterbacks in that New England Patriots scenario, and if they're winning, that same thing's going to happen. And and with the perception of scarcity around Mac Jones rookie cards, and because he is so new and he did go to Alabama and all those other things that that I mean, it just it just uh, amplified the effects of what we saw. So we get to the Sunday matchup. Um, so this is our hobby tip of the day. We're going to do it right in the middle. And this is the most important tip. I, I guess this would be top three most important tips we give on this channel. Um be on the lookout for reprints. So there was a Tom Brady reprint that was making its way around eBay. 16 out of 100, uh, rookie ticket auto. And Andy, I saw it. I was like, wow, this card looks so good. And the, the, the price is only $400, which is really cheap for that card. And it didn't have RP in the title, but it did in the description. That is the shakiest scammiest i could say a lot of other words uh i don't i I, once again this is a family-friendly podcast but be on the lookout because the scammers are in full force trying to get you to believe that you're getting a rookie ticket auto brady 16 out of 100 for 400 dollars. andy two things if the price is too good to be true on these goat cards it probably is and number two Read the description. If you're buying a big card, send a message to the seller to get as much clarification as you possibly can, because if not, you will get scammed. Yeah, I would say the the first thing that you do, right, is you comp that. Like if you see that and you think, wow, this could be a good deal. Like it's, you know, it would be a lot of money, right? I'm going to spend $400 on a card. Well, let me comp it to see what his other ones are selling for. And then you see a graded one that sells for $50,000. It's <laughs> and all of a sudden, you know, <laughs> something's going on. That's when you send the messages and you read the fine print. Because I've seen those, man. Anytime a player gets into that stratosphere, Mahomes, Brady, Aaron Rodgers, any of the goats, they start reprinting them. They start putting them on refrigerator magnets and different stickers and That's the problem, man. Some of these eBay sellers are unethical, Carter, and they're not putting it in the title. They're putting it in the description, and technically uh, eBay lets them get away with that. All right, so as far as this middle of the week or these Sunday games, Andy, I think the most interesting player to me, obviously, is Jalen Hurts in this this first-round matchup. I don't think the Ingles are going to win versus the Buccaneers. I, I just don't. But I do think the Eagles are going to convince themselves that Jalen Hurts is their guy. Um, once again, I it's not as safe of an investment, but I, pr- I feel pretty confident that the Eagles feel Hurts is their best option moving forward. I don't think they're going to move off of him. I don't think uh, – the. the I think they're out of the Deshaun Watson sweepstakes, Russell Wilson, all all the elite free agents, and I don't think they're going to go for someone in the draft. So once again, a few weeks ago, Andy, I didn't pull the trigger. I should have. Jalen Hurts' prices were insanely low before his you know big game. Uh, I love him. I really do. Right? You know, you had the endearing image of him helping those fans when the stadium fell apart. Uh, <laughs> you know, he's just an affable guy. So. Uh, I, I like Jalen Hurts for uh, the future. I think he's the most interesting player because if for some reason he wins, maybe it would be smart to unload on some Jalen Hurts because that would be the most shocking upset of, of the first round. It would. And, hey, man, he's still underpriced. 
I mean, I'm, right. I'm looking at uh, rookie ticket autos right here that sold two days ago Sunday for $128. He didn't play. Tension wasn't on him. There was some other chaotic games going on. Um, you know, he didn't play. His rookie ticket auto, that's the kind of thing you want to watch out for. That is way undervalued when you talk about rookie base rookie ticket autos on card auto of Joe Burrow and Justin Herbert going for well over a thousand dollars in most cases two thousand dollars now. Um, Jalen Hurts at 130. I mean, that's a massive undervalue. And if he wins this game, somehow finds a way they find a way to win, that's huge. This is a defining moment for his career. As far as these other matchups are concerned, obviously Roethlisberger at this point would be a legendary play. Uh, Mahomes is just so out of the stratosphere when it comes to his prices. Uh, I don't, I don't know necessarily, Andy. I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna give it to you. Is there anyone else outside of the quarterbacks in these final four games? 49ers, Cowboys, Steelers, Chiefs that that really stick out to you? Yeah, I think it I think it goes back to investing in good athletes, whether or not um, they're getting like the Lions opportunity share on the team as as a true alpha in their position. It doesn't really matter to me. They're in the playoffs. They could rip off another uh, 60, 70 yard play, a big play, whether it's offensively or defensively lead to some incredible highlights. And then if they're part of the team that wins, all of a sudden we see a big demand spike. People want those cards because of how many people are watching the playoff games and how amplified the effects are from one single play. Um, so some guys I'm going to throw out there real quick. I'm looking at that are still super undervalued that I'm fine holding long term. If nothing pans out from this weekend, like for prime example, Tony Pollard on the Dallas Cowboys. Love that guy. I'm going to go, I'm going to go the Steelers skill guys. Right, so Najee Harris, Deontay Johnson, Chase Claypool, Pat Firemuth, however you say his last name, right? So Pittsburgh's going to be a very attractive landing spot for a lot of quarterbacks, right? Super Bowl winning head coach, best franchise in the league, most stable uh, franchise in the league in the minds of many. Uh, I, I could see a big-time free agent quarterback going to those weapons. Um, also, Najee Harris looks really good. Right, I saw a lot of Najee Harris, Chase Claypool rookies in that ninety-nine cents yesterday. It mm -hmm. was a good lot, right? A lot of good skill guys in there. I like the Steelers skill guys moving forward. They're still relatively young, and I think uh, a free agent quarterback destination. Uh, you know, I, I I could see Deshaun Watson somehow, some way landing uh, in a stable situation such as that one. So I really do like the, the, the Steelers skill guys. Whereas if you look at someone, Andy, like the Kansas City chief skill guys, um, you know, you don't know the future of Clyde Edwards Hilaire after a rocky year. And, you know, Travis Kelsey cards are are still pretty high. So, you know, be on the lookout for some good value on some skill guys uh, in that matchup right there. And then last but certainly not least, Andy, the sexiest matchup I think of the mm -hmm. weekend, Cardinals, Rams, third time they play this season. NFC West showdown here. <sighs> Man. I don't know where to lean on this, right? Because there's so many interesting players in this game. This is a, this is another very defining moment. I think this is like, to me, for this is bigger game for Matt Stafford uh, than it is for Kyler Murray because Absolutely. Matt Stafford, uh, much older, he's been in many playoff games before where he has not been able to deliver a victory for his team, and now he's got everything he could ever ask for with the Rams. And uh, this is a huge game. Andy, I'm actually holding randomly a lot of Chandler Jones. <laughs> I know that's not the player that everyone was expecting us to talk about. But, you know, his I, I was able to get a huge lot earlier this year um, at 75 cents a card for his rookie refractors. So, you know, that's obviously, you know, personally someone I'm looking for. I also have a lot of Odell as well. I think what's really fascinating about this matchup is people that invested in Matthew Stafford, Andy, are going to feel some type of way after this game. 
if Stafford wins, you feel as if he can go to the Super Bowl and get it done for you. If he loses, you feel you wasted hundreds, if not thousands of dollars. So I mm. think out of any quarterback uh, uh, of this weekend, I think Matthew Stafford has the most to gain and lose because he's fringe Hall of Famer and you know he's still trying to define his legacy. Every other quarterback that's playing this weekend, their legacy is already set and or they're young. Their, their legacy has not yet been defined. So I agree with you, man. Stafford has so much riding on this game. And then, Andy, you look at defensive legends in this game, right? So obviously you got J.J. Watt on one side. Is he going to play? We don't know. But still, you can buy Jalen Ramsey and Aaron Donald cards. Uh, Donald, for sure, a Hall of Famer. Ramsey well on his way. Uh, to being a Hall of Famer, you can still get a lot of really cheap defensive players. Uh, and then, Andy, the skill guys in this game are are very interesting as well. Yeah, very interesting in this game. I will say that Stafford, you know, was seen limping around um, at, at the end of, of last week's game. He's got a toe injury. I kind of like that Chandler Jones play, man, with Stafford uh, potentially dealing with a little injury in this playoff game. Chandler Jones could feast on him, man. Um, and and we do. We see the demand. Aaron Donald, what's what's funny, Carter, is that Aaron Donald prism rookie cards are selling for the same as Derek Carr prism-based rookie cards. Now, as you get more scarce and more rare, we've seen higher prices go for Derek Carr than Aaron Donald. But Aaron Donald cards are expensive, they, even the rare ones, like several hundred dollars. So this is what's interesting right this is why i love this matchup the most as far as a football card buyer because we put so much stock into hall of fame there are so many like fringe hall of fame skill guys in this game right so for arizona you have zach Ertz and aj green mm. for the rams you have odell beckham jr who's you know, we don't really know how to really describe Odell's career at this point. And this is coming from an LSU fan. And, of course, you have Cooper Cup, who, you know, if he puts a few more years together like he had, he will be going to the Hall of Fame uh, in his own right. Uh, so there is some very, very fascinating skill guys. Also, Cam Akers, right? I know, Andy, you were a Cam Aker buyer uh, going into this playoffs uh, th that's something else that's that's really fascinating. Cam Akers, James Conner, and the the running backs uh, mm. in this matchup. Re it's just I don't know. I, I've thought about this matchup. This is a game that I'm the most excited about. Andy, I have no idea who's going to win this. I I, mm. I really really don't. I tend to lean Rams because I do feel they do have the better roster, but I honestly have no idea. I have no earthy idea. Yeah, and, and another guy, Jalen Ramsey. Did you see that interception he made last week? Unreal. unreal. He's unreal. Unreal. And and you got no DeAndre Hopkins. So this is interesting for the for the Zach Ertz, the AJ Green, the Christian Kirk. I know a lot of people have bought Christian Kirk cards recently. Um, yeah, I love the I love the potential to be able to unload some Cam Akers this weekend on hype. Um, I definitely need to get more of my Cam Akers cards listed because he's definitely he saw uh, what I think about 13 carries or thir thir 13 snaps. It was 13 carries, 13 snaps. Don't quote me on that, but he definitely saw some carries in last week's game. It wasn't it didn't account for much. They said they were going to ease him in. Uh, so this week he could see anywhere from, you know, 25 percent snap share all the way up to 75 percent snap share because Sony Michelle didn't play great either last week and this is the playoffs so this is where it gets really fascinating andy you not only as a buyer have to worry about this week or a seller you have to worry about next week right because we all want that super bowl window we all want to be holding cards of players that are playing in the super bowl here's something else to keep in mind about the rams and the cardinals game and if you're watching this on youtube uh, we have the schedule put up, but we don't have the actual seeds of the team. So what's really interesting 
is in that Rams and Cardinals matchup, they play on Monday night. It is the rare Monday night playoff game. If the Buccaneers and Cowboys win, the Rams or Cardinals would have to play on a short week versus a rested one seed, right, based on how the playoff bracket actually sets up. I hate the Rams and Cardinals on a short week having to play a motivated Aaron Rodgers in Green Bay. Uh, I think mm. Green Bay slaughters if uh, either one of those teams if they actually move on. So if you are a Rams or Cardinals holder, understand that if you feel the Buccaneers and the Cowboys are going to win, um, that means for certain the Rams or the Cardinals will play Green Bay. But if the Eagles or 49ers beat the Buccaneers and Cowboys, the Eagles or 49ers are for sure going to play Green Bay in that next week. So keep that in mind and understand, Andy, this is very important if you if you are new to football cards, that the playoff bracket is still based on the same set of rules. Even though they added an extra team to the playoffs, the lower seeded team into the next round will play the one seed. And you also got to factor that in for the AFC as well. Yeah, very true, man. Very true. So I would I would be trying to sell more cards on the hype leading into the game this weekend for those Cardinals and Rams, especially with that being the only game, the finale of the wild card weekend. Yeah. So this would be my tip, Andy. And tell me, tell me what you think. If you if the Buccaneers and the Cowboys win, that would give me more incentive for me to unload Ram and Cardinal cards. Um, because there's just no way I could see either one of those teams on a short week. Once again, this is new, uh, rather unprecedented. And remember, the Cardinals and Rams both played competitive games in week seven or week 18. So uh, on a short week, rest at Green Bay. Uh, if the Buccaneers and Cowboys win, I would move more aggressively with my Cardinals and Ram cards, especially, especially if the Rams win. Because if I'm holding Matthew Stafford, there's no way Matthew Stafford and the Rams are beating Green Bay and Green Bay. Uh, even though the Rams played Green Bay and Green Bay in a somewhat tight game the year before in the playoffs, still, I, I just don't trust either of those teams beating Green Bay and Green Bay on a short week. I, I don't either, man. I don't either. I think this is your chance. The prices have been down on both Stafford and Kyler Murray uh, throughout the season because they didn't they didn't live up to that uh, expectation they had coming in. And um, they're, they've gotten back. They've gotten back there. But that doesn't necessarily translate over to the rookie cards value getting back there. They've now got to make a bigger statement, i.e. a wild card game here. We're definitely seeing hype build up into this game. Guys, I think this is your a great shot. Even, even down to you know the Van Jeffersons. Um, we talked about Christian Kirk, Rondell Moore's, the James Connors, like you mentioned. Um, all those guys defensively as well. Um, definitely, I, I love that play. That's a big thing because I mean Cowboys and Bucks. I think the Cowboys definitely win this game. Obviously, I'm I'm a Bucks fan. If you guys didn't know, but so. I, I like our chances. I like our chances. Let's put it that way. So let's give Super Bowl predictions, Andy. Okay. Mm. I don't know. I don't. I don't know. I don't know where to start. Um, <laughs> I. I. Mm. Let me ask you this. I know. I already know what you're going to say. You're going to say Buccaneers Chiefs. I already know it. I already know you're gonna say Bucks Chiefs. Oh, rematch. Are you are you are you are you are you are you going Bucks Chiefs? I know I know it's what your gut is I, telling you. I, I was at, I was actually gonna go with I was actually gonna go with Bucks Bengals. Bucks Bengals? You think the Cincinnati Bengals are gonna uh, It's Joe Burrow, man. I don't know, man. I, I feel like 
Joe Burrow might actually be the second coming of Tom Brady in the league. I think that's uh, the question mark I've got in my head. And uh, and I don't, I don't know, man, just everything about the guy. This might be, this might be destiny for him. I don't know, man. Bucks Bengals. Andy, I am the Bengal fan here. Well, the Bengal asterisk fan, right? First thing before I get my Super Bowl prediction, I hate the NFC West. Once again, the NFC West for the fourth straight year screwed over the Saints. <laughs> Matthew Stafford noodle-armed Odell Beckham Jr. for the game-winning TD. And my dear beloved Hootats would have been in the playoffs. But no, of course, the 49ers and the Rams screw over the Saints yet again. Yet again. But anyway, uh, my, my playoff prediction, I'm I'm actually going to go. Uh, mm, I, I do think the Chiefs find a way to get it done uh, and find their way back into the big game. The Steelers aren't good. You know, the Chiefs are going to blow them out, I think, again. Um and I also like the Chiefs in the second round. I really do. I, you know, as much as I love Joe Burrow, I, I think they win week one. Uh, not on fire about the Bills defense, not on fire about Mac Jones as a quarterback. I, I really do love Kansas City to find their way back into yet again another Super Bowl. And I'm I'm actually gonna go Chiefs Cowboys. I, I love Dallas's roster. Obviously, you know, the 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 vertical pass game is something that scares you. And once again, if the Buccaneers do win, the Cowboys are going to have to go into Tampa and win that second round matchup and then have to play the Packers for the championship round. As much as I want to go Green Bay, I think the ghost of Des Bryant comes back and helps the Cowboys to find their way into the Super Bowl. So my Super Bowl prediction is going to be Cowboys and chiefs mm. i could see that uh i'll tell you the cowboys i micah parsons makes makes me nervous <laughs> put it that way um i don't we don't have the most mobile quarterback but he's quick to throw it <laughs> so I, I yeah man I, that's a solid prediction i know a lot of guys out there definitely predict cowboys. i can totally see the chiefs they're they're peaking at the right time and if it's not them, I mean, it's either Bills or Bengals. I feel like we're sleeping on the Bills a little bit. But my thing yeah. is, I think that Tredavious White injury is going to catch up to him eventually. I think their secondary with, with that injury there, I, I think that's going to be too much for them to overcome. Um, but we shall see. So obviously, you know, when it, when it comes to the hobby itself – uh, you know, this is so unpredictable. It's kind of, you know, you can't really predict the Super Bowl, uh, but those are our picks. Now, Andy, before we get into our plays of the week, uh, is there anything else as far as like playoff knowledge that you would like to expound upon to the lovely groups of people listening to this pod? Uh, I would just say that, you know, I have definitely seen and sold myself uh, many more cards this past week than I have pretty much all season. There is a, a lot of hype right now for a lot of players if you've been holding. And I, I wouldn't try and get uh, greedy. I mean, I, we talked about this before, but I think it's very important to even if it's a matter of you know, selling card for 20 to 30 percent profit. If the card is worth enough money, you know, i.e., you buy for $80 and now you're able to sell it for 120, 130. If you wanted 150, 160, and you're trying to roll the dice, you're trying to squeeze every last last drop out of that that orange or that lemon. I would just I honestly I would accept the offer at 120 and sell the card. You gave the next person room to grow financially in the card, and you also move the card because we know it's, it can be hard to get offers in sometimes. Um, and, and that's the thing. It's, it's not, you know, that's the, one of the compound differences between fantasy football and card and, and flipping. Yeah, uh, you know, it's interesting uh, for me before we get in, 
you know, play of the week or whatever. I feel it's important for you to ask yourself a question. Who do you see being a top 10 player at the position uh, 10 years from now, right? Those are the kind of long-term hedges you can make, right? So uh, take Derek Carr, for instance. I love Derek Carr. I bought a lot of his stuff, flipped a bunch of his stuff this year. Um, I don't see him as a Hall of Famer, but I know for sure he's never missed a game. He's going to show up. He's going to show out. Well, I think he's missed like one or two games. I don't know. Um, But really ask yourself, do you really feel that player is a GOAT or a top 10 player? Uh, because, you know, whenever you buy quarterbacks for an exorbitant amount of money, uh, you, you really want to feel safe. Quick flips, while we do talk about it on here, they're really hard. They're really hard to get a boom flip and you're making a thousand dollars more on whichever card. Um I do think there are three AFC quarterbacks in the playoffs that I like long term. Obviously, Joe Burrow, obviously Josh Allen. But if you are one of those people that really thinks Patrick Mahomes is going to get himself another Super Bowl, get himself another MVP down the road. Andy, we've talked about him. We just talk about him every week on this channel, like how much his prices fluctuate. If you are a Patrick Mahomes GOAT believer, buy now. Because if he wins the Super Bowl now, his prices are going to get back to what they were and – those prices were simply insane. Yeah. Oh, they're definitely going to get back there because they have got, they've regained probably about 80% of that momentum that they had coming into the season and that they lost in that, that period was, we'll always remember this, that October 2021 was just a, just a slam dunk time to, to buy football cards, you know, but they're, yeah, I would say if you still like it, like you're saying, if you believe he's the hall of famer, he's the goat, then now is the time to buy some that aren't just absolutely astronomical. The same thing for Josh Allen. I mean, Josh Allen's cards have not even got back to, I would say, 80% of that that initial hype period like coming into last season. So now if like if you believe that Josh Allen is going to take the Bills to the Super Bowl, then his cards are probably going to go up um, a lot more from what they're at now. And uh, it's just it's a great time to buy. Right. Um, those, yeah. those type of guys that you really believe in long term. Otherwise, you know, take take offers, man. Why not move move some capital and then start investing in, in some some free agents coming that are coming in next year. Um, you know, we talked about historically, like before the show, the the, the hype period leading into the playoffs. Um, I kind of want you to I want you to share with people why you think it is that we're going to see arguably a bigger hype for the entire league of, of players leading into the draft versus the playoffs. Yeah. So this is what's really key, Andy. We saw something pretty incredible. Now you look at prices way more in detail than I do, but we're both in agreement. Agreement. That's not even a word. Agreement. <laughs> really? We're both in agreement here that, we saw something before the NFL draft that was pretty freaking incredible. And Andy, I want you to expound on this before I share this theory that I have. What actually happened to football card prices around the draft? It was it was pretty incredible. Oh, yeah. We saw – I mean, I, I interpreted it as a postseason reflection period combined with hype, you know – around the draft but i saw a big spike man i saw pretty much every you know top 20 <laughs> performer from the previous season all go up in value across the board you know obviously starting with quarterbacks and then but trickling down big time wide receivers running backs tight ends the whole nine yards leading into the draft so what i think is going to happen to the football card market is I think the NFL draft is going to get bigger than the playoffs. Uh, And I I think it already is for this one reason. The playoffs, only a few certain teams have moved on. But think about the NFL culture where 
every year things really reset. There's only a few bottom barrel franchises that never get out of the dumps, right? The Jaguars and the Jets, but you're always one quarterback away. You're always one move away, right? Our mood towards the Bengals and Bills are completely different than what it was just two years ago, right? The same thing even to a certain degree with the Chargers. The one thing the NFL draft does is it provides hope for all 32 teams instead of just the elite 10 or so teams that legit have a shot of winning the Super Bowl. So while we do understand and we do preach that there is a real playoff buying and selling window, and Andy, you've done really good on sales this past week. I haven't done as well. I've done okay. But we also want to share this note that the NFL draft is a real selling period, buying and selling hot period. It's another spike, and I think, Andy, the spike will continue again going into this next draft. I do. I do. I mean, several reasons, all the ones you've just mentioned, not just that, but to me, I'm also thinking, look, there's no fantasy football going on, right? There's no DFS. There's no daily fantasy. There's no live sports betting in terms of, of football. So, you know, people have extra resources. They also have extra time. And we're all wanting to see whose team is going to be affected by a new skill position player, new supporting cast member. You also have, you know, different trades and uh, free agency signings and stuff like that going on throughout this period as well. And uh, it's still very fresh. Like this season is still going to be very fresh in everybody's mind, truly, before we get into summer. You know, I saw I'm I'm right there with you. I think it's going to be a phenomenal we should see a nice curve up in a lot of guys' values into the draft. And it's all one event, right? It's all leading up to one day, right? Mm -hmm. And March Madness have just ended. The NBA playoffs haven't started. It really is a dead period. And the NFL draft quenches a certain kind of football thirst because you are parched of football. Yeah, There's no college. There's no nothing. You just get hyped, right? So we want – to make sure that we hammer home that point at the end of the episode that the playoffs isn't the only final buying window. People get thirsty for some football during the NFL draft time. So Andy, we honestly, I don't know if there's a play of the week. We went through a thousand different plays today, but is, is there something uh, on your mind that you think is a for sure slam dunk play? Well, I would I would say this, right? Everybody's going to be focused on the teams actually playing this weekend. But why not look at guys on the Green Bay Packers? You know, why not look at guys on the Kansas City Chiefs, see if they're going undervalued. Um, wait, they got the first round by, right? On the in the AFC? No, Titans do. Oh, uh, I knew I said that wrong. The tight the Titan, why not look at those guys in the Titans that we talked about earlier? while people are still maybe distracted throughout this week because there are a lot of people, they like to make impulsive purchases thinking that they could potentially gamble on a guy playing this weekend. They're looking to parlay, get in instantly, guys, this weekend, whereas, you know, it's important. Look at the bigger picture. Look at the guys not playing till the end of next week. Um, a guy yeah. I like a lot on Green Bay is Alan Lazard uh, behind Devontae Adams. You know, uh, he had two touchdowns last week. Marquez Valdez-Scantling's got an injury now. I'm not sure if he's going to be playing. I haven't seen the latest status. I'm not sure if he's going to be playing. He definitely, I know Devontae Adams is, a, is the lead dog there. But, I mean, whoever they play, very likely the game's going to go into a shootout scenario where Alan Lazard be heavily involved. He's a pretty big, physical, physically dominant-looking wide receiver, not too old. I think we could see a nice little demand spike from him. And I always am like every week I'm looking for AJ Dillon cards because he's getting um, bigger and better and more active in the sports card hobby. Carter Dillon's deals, man. Dillon's deals. I love it, man. Yeah. AJ, out of any football player uh, currently in the NFL, no one is more involved with sports cards uh, than, than AJ Dillon. I totally agree. I mean, once again, even though there's a gut feeling that the Cowboys are going to be in the playoffs, 
uh, for me, it does feel like this is Aaron's year, right? This does feel the, the most confident Super Bowl play is going to be the Packers getting into that Super Bowl window. So once again, those skill position players, maybe if you can get a, get a Devontae Adams card at a, at a decent price, maybe that's a play that you could make. Um, because, you know, he's pretty much a lock uh, for the Hall of Fame at this point. He's close to it. Um, so, yeah, I like that. I, I, I like those those Green Bay back, Packer plays. And once again, I, I'm going to stick by it. I think Russell Wilson is a really good play because I, I still think the hype of wherever he goes is just going to be simply incredible. I don't think he stays in Seattle. I think this is a situation where he wants to go somewhere else. Uh, So we shall see. Andy, once again, everyone needs to join the Patreon Fantasy Football Card Quest. All you got to go to is uh, patreon.com slash football cards. You get to chat with me. You get to chat with everyone in the Discord. Yes, sir. We will see you guys there. We appreciate the support. Peace.